joined by our friend, pulled right off the RNC floor. Well, that's Caitlin correct. Sinclair. Well, not off the floor, but from the floor. Caitlin Sinclair. I know people were out late <laughs> last night, but I didn't mean it like that. Um, Caitlin Sinclair with us. Uh, she's the spokesperson for Turning Point USA. And it, it is always good to see the RNC youth in attendance here. Yes, and yes. I feel like I, we're in our 40s. We can say that. We got these young whippersnappers yes. running around here that are very fired up about Donald Trump. Yes, they are. But hey, 40s still young. 40s are <laughs> That's young. That's right. I consider that young. But yes, it's incredible. And Turning Point's doing such great work. We're doing all of the grassroots stuff, guys. We just launched our new Gen Z coalition last week, really encouraging young people to get involved. And look, they, I think, have really realized how much they've been lied to, robbed of their time. They're starting to ask the tough questions, challenge the status quo. We have such incredible speakers like Vivek Ramaswamy, for example, who is represents that young generation. And he is so inspiring to look up to. And I think this is a perfect event for young people to get inspired and learn what we need to do to take this country back. Are you seeing, because I'm seeing, and I'm curious, mm -hmm. young men, 18 to 29, it seems like are overwhelmingly breaking towards Trump. Right. That's what the data is reflecting. We're seeing massive movements. In other words, young guys are saying, you know, a lot of this left-wing stuff is just ridiculous, and they're overwhelmingly re rejecting it, white, black, Asian, Hispanic. Are you seeing younger women, too, or do you think there's a big gender divide? Because you're from the New York City area, yes. and I, I want to get into one thing that happened to you particularly. Oh, that's right. Uh, but in the New York City area, it feels like, in many parts of the country, guys are coming around to Trump, girls still aren't. What are you seeing? I, I'm just going to say it because I'm, I'm a female. I think I can say this, but I think females are responsible for the deterioration of our society. <laughs> do not cancel me for that. But I really do believe that. The women need to wake up. Why or, do you think women are not waking up like men are? I think just naturally we're emotional, right? You hear uh, past rhetoric from Donald Trump that people just still don't like, these females that are just naturally emotional. They have Trump derangement syndrome and they can't see past that. They had a, a president that promised unity, right, to be to be the president of bringing people together. And, I mean, I just don't think they can look past the Trump derangement syndrome and orange man bad. So it, we're, we're leaving it up to the frat boys to save this country. I'm quite excited about this. I, I think, think we have them on tomorrow, I think we way. do. Yeah, oh, the UNC go. frat guys let's are on go. the show with I'm, us tomorrow. I am all about that, let me tell you. And I think the men are realizing more than the women right now that this is not an election, guys, between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. This is an election between Trump, J.D. Vance versus Kamala Harris. And I think the men are aware of how scary that is. Yes, the notion that Kamala Harris could at any point be, well, I was going to say commander-in-chief, but then I realized she is the <laughs> vice president, which is scary <laughs> enough as it is. And one thing we always talk about is if Joe Biden, you know, Clay and I have these ongoing bets. Oh, I know. Which, which, I, I want to see I'm, it, too. I'm, I'm Can losing, I get in on this? Right now, right now, Clay, he's I owe a lot of steaks. Oh, yes. what kind of Big steak Don. are we getting? The oh, most expensive you, he can find. You, you know poppy steak, right? Oh, Where they I have love the poppy steak. the gold and the smoke and the, the guy's dancing. He's he's taking me to... The question is, how many nights is he taking me there? Oh, <laughs> but, I better get an invite uh, for one uh, of these. So, so with all that going on, though, we're still wondering to see what happens with Biden. But given how things are going for Biden, why would anyone take over for him from the Democrat side? It feels like you're stepping into a game where you're three touchdowns behind. Oh, I agree with you. I, I, we've been floating all of these ideas, right? Like a Gavin Newsom taking over. There's, there, Gavin Newsom, first of all, is in this for the long haul. There's no way that he's going to put his own ego aside and all of the work he thinks he's been doing and, and just quickly step in like that. He's in it for the long haul. We all know Joe Biden. This is all by design. I think the most troubling part about this, I've been trying to reflect on the past week alone, the troubling part about the media now admitting that Joe Biden has, you know, having some obvious cognitive decline is the fact that it took the, the mainstream media, the establishment media, to tell half of the American people how to think, to tell them, oh, now we don't agree that this is a good candidate, so now you guys can agree with us as well. What happened? Like, there was no discernment here. What happened to the art of thinking in this country? Why Why did it take half of Americans to wait till the mainstream media told them how to think to realize that our commander in chief is clearly not a suitable candidate? And I think that's the most troubling part about what we've seen. In okay. Fact, I was just going to say, tell us about what happened to you in New York City. Uh -oh. Because I just mentioned that there is a obvious gender divide. Yeah. But 
you had a post that you put up on Instagram <laughs> and it went super viral and they decided that your opinion, your joke, yeah. was not allowed to be shared. I bet our at, audience at a does social it. club. At a social club in New York City. That you belong to. You Mayor to... Adams, by the way, is like is a constant Oh, you mean Mayor Nightlife Buck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear he is there all the time for my New yes, York friends. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah. So what happened to me was I put up a tongue in cheek post. It was it was a catchphrase that said, You were here because your dad is not queer. It was my Father's Day message, and I live in a very liberal city, New York, New York. And it was put in a funny way. It was like put it's on in Instagram. a funny way yeah. on my personal social media pages, and it was, of course, not meant to offend anyone. It was rooted in a scientific facts, right? And that scares the left. Yep. Now, the social club, Zero Bond, which I belong to, which you've been a guest of mine before. I've been We've there. had some yes. fun there. And the, the owners of the club have actually in the past said to me that they appreciate that I'm there. They need diversity in the club. Diverse perspectives? Right. Yes. Is that a yes. thing? Right. So, honestly, I wasn't shocked at this, but I think this just speaks to the, the larger message of what's happening across they the country. They banned you from being able they to come in there because they didn't like your Instagram. Revoked my membership, gentlemen, because they thought my post offended the LGBTQ LMNOP community. And let me tell you, this happened only a few days before Zero Bond was hosting a drag queen brunch at the club, which, quite frankly, offends me as a paying member of the club. You didn't see me complaining, right? So the the same members that attend this club have been to pro-Hamas rallies. They have posted hateful messages about Donald Trump on their private social media pages. So the club, Zero Bond, claims they want diversity, but only when it fits their agenda. And again, I've said this. This story really isn't about me or Zero Bond, right? We're all too busy. I don't have time, honestly, to attend any social clubs this year. But it's about, it's a microcosm of what's happening across the country. I cannot tell you. It's it thousands of messages I received. Me. I mean, what am I doing? I have a small platform, but people were thanking me for, for putting a message out there like that, for, for being steadfast and, and unwavering in my Christian and conservative beliefs. And all I posted was a, a scientific fact. The fact that there are two genders and it takes a male and a, and a female to procreate. What is wrong with that? And at first I was angry and, and a little upset, but I'm not backing down. I'm not backing down from scientific facts. New Yorkers reached out to me. New Yorkers reached out to me. I was out in the Hamptons. Strangers were coming up to me saying, you know, we're not going there anymore. Members actually revoked their membership after what happened to me saying, you kicked out a conservative for stating, again, scientific facts. I don't want to be a part of this club anymore. I think we're seeing a cultural shift right now. I'm sure you guys are aware. If you're paying attention, you can feel it out there. Americans are fed up, and they're not going to stand for this double standard, and that's what, what, what's wrong here, right? And that's what I want the club to acknowledge. If you can't accept me and my beliefs and scientific facts and my Christian or conservative beliefs, which, again— these, some of these right. things are written in the Bible. Why should we have members that attend pro Hamas rallies being allowed to? to we just need we just need to know, Caitlin. How long before you move to Tennessee or Florida <laughs> or maybe Texas? Texas could throw their hat in the ring too. Oh boy, uh, I'm getting to that point. I've always been the the New Yorker nowhere kind of girl, I'm, but I, I used to be that guy. I know. Let I know. Let me tell you, those taxes. They'll not get you. They'll, They'll get, get you. It's not, not fun. The taxes and the communists. It's not a good combination. <laughs> but Caitlin Clark, thank you, as always, for uh, for coming to hang out. Turning Point spokesperson. She'll it, be here at the RNC with us. And if you have kids or grandkids mm -hmm. and you're listening to us and you're trying to influence them, Turning Point, that's basically the goal, right? To oh. expose them to the ideas of the Republican Party. Absolutely. And again, I think this we're at an interesting time right now in political history where young people want to get involved. You can go to coalitions.com, TP Action, download our app, and find out the ways that you can.